When steam engines first came into widespread use in the early 1800s, they were extremely powerful. But that power came at a price. They were also extremely dangerous. To create maximum power, their boilers had to contain steam at high pressures. They weren't always up to the task. There were a lot of problems in the 19th century with the explosion of boilers. Before you know, you'd have an explosion that could kill everyone. Robert Stirling, a clergyman in Scotland in the early 1800s, was tired of seeing his parishioners getting injured or killed by exploding steam engines. So he decided to do something about it. Part inventor, part preacher, 100% renaissance man. He was an incredible guy. Stirling came up with an entirely new engine design in 1816, which he called a hot air engine. Today, it's known as the Stirling engine. The Stirling engines that he developed were low pressure engines. And so they, there was nothing really in there that was a high pressure that could explode even if the machine failed. Stirling engines are engines that heat one side of the engine and cool the other side of the engine. And then there's a mechanism inside the engine that moves the air back and forth between the hot side and the cold side. When the air is on the hot side, it expands and pushes up on a piston. And when the air is on a cold side, it contracts and pulls down on a piston. But there was a problem with Reverend Sterling's invention. The metals used in the 1800s were not heat resistant enough to make the Sterling engine as durable as a steam engine. The metals didn't stand up to the high temperature continuous flying. The, the boiler is the part of the steam engine that is exposed to continuous flying. Um, in a Stirling engine, it's the hot cylinder of the engine, so it's a different part of the engine. But with today's modern metallurgy, some believe the Stirling engine may now be viable. Brent Van Arsdell manufactures small demonstration engines that show off the unique capabilities of Reverend Stirling's invention. One of the engines runs on the hot air from a cup of coffee. But surprisingly, it also runs on the cold air from a bowl of ice. All it needs is a temperature difference to make it run. All you've got to do is keep one side hot and the other side cold. You can do that any place that you can keep the temperature difference. These things will run. This Stirling engine can run on the heat from the palm of your hand. Now, over the decades, people have tried to put Stirling engines in vehicles. And the conclusion right now is, no, it's an expensive engine much more expensive than the sort of alternatives like gasoline, diesel engines. And it's very hard to make it efficient on a vehicle because the, the way the engine is running changes all the time. As you and I drive, we speed up, we slow down, we accelerate. That makes it hard for the engine to stay efficient all the time, especially hard for the Stirling engine.